Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be utilizing the uh, water bath. So a couple episodes ago, I showed you guys I created this. I whipped this up in OpenSCAD. I embedded a vise in it. Did a review on the vise quite a while ago. Neat little thing, as you can see here, um, well, maybe you can't. Let me try adjusting the camera a little bit to get in. Okay, welcome back. So uh, cut over to this angle. And so you can see the vise in here. I've got the rock held in by these pegs, which I thought was a unique piece about this vise because it holds odd-shaped objects. I've got, I'm utilizing a two millimeter um, ball end, a diamond uh, coated ball end to do the engraving. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna engrave this rock. Now, one of the unique things about this ball end is it's tapered back up. And I'll see if I can't zoom in on it here. And the idea is it allows us to get kind of deeper in for the engraving. Now, now the ball is about two millimeters. I'm going to go about 1.5 millimeters uh, in, and it's going to be a rather, it's going to be a heart-shaped pattern with some words. So I'm going to see how it comes out. Uh, one of the things I took the measurement of the rock, the narrowest measurement, which is the side to side here, and I used that as a circle, and I'm roughly in the center of that. Now you notice that the rock tapers. And this is one of the reasons for going about 1.5 millimeters is the centerpiece will be deeper and the edges will be thinner. So we'll see how it comes out because I think this is kind of a neat project for an Etsy shop or uh, you know any kind of thing where you're going to engrave a, a lucky rock or you know you can turn beach stones into money. So one of the things that I I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take a little bit of of high density detergent and pour it right on the stone just a little bit you don't need a lot and then what I'm going to do is I am going to try not to step on anything and make it around and come to this side and then fill it up I think I got the valve closed and I hope this is watertight if not we'll sort of find out now what I'm gonna do is just fill it roughly just so the rock is covered now notice in this case it kind pretty close to the top so there we go so the rack is covered so now what I'm going to do is go through the rest of the setup and we're going to switch to a time lapse and uh, run this out and see what happens so let's cut to the time lapse Okay, we're back. So we took a, a look at that time lapse, and here's the result. Now, this stone turned out to be a little bit harder than I thought, and also a little bit more tapered. You notice how it's kind of light right here. So as I cut down the 1.5 millimeters, I got a nice cut here. Um, but obviously, I didn't get too much of a cut over here. And this is where I'm going to have to experiment with uh, somehow a kind of leveling this out. I got a couple ideas, and I'll probably do some... Uh, future videos on that. I did have a little bit of a leak in the um, in the water bath itself down here at the bottom uh, down around here. I think there's some plastic separation where I didn't get epoxy in there. So I have to check that. But all in all, it uh, it worked pretty good. Uh, it did. Uh, I don't know how hot this still is, but it, it basically obliterated the uh, ball end here. There seemed to be uh, down here on the stone uh, some harder. Uh, components. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got an interesting sheen to it where it cut. I'm not sure, I'm not quite a geologist, um, so I'm not sure what kind of stone this is. It was a little bit harder, but uh, you know, also notice the shape of the heart here. Uh, I, I think again it came out pretty interesting and really nice definition in here. Now I cut this, I can't remember the speed, but the depth was 0.1 millimeter a pass. Um, I think for a harder stone, I might actually cut that even in half and just have it go more passes. Uh, the one thing is, you could see even in the water bath, part of it um, I did notice too is because only, only a little bit of this was in the water. I didn't expect it to get as hot as it did. And that was a little bit of the problem. I don't know in the video you could see it actually turn red hot even in the water. 
uh, it turned red hot. So uh, uh, I think if I had more of the shank in the water, there'd be a little bit better distribution uh, of heat um, because this did create quite a bit of heat. Uh, I also am not sure a ball nose was the best pick for this. I think, um, you know, something more so like, for example, this might be a little bit better. I don't know. This is probably a little bit too light, um, you know, because I used a, a ball end. So like this one, the, uh, only the one I used was just a tad bit smaller. And you can see that it created a nice path and it wasn't actually until roughly the end that it broke. Um, but, you know, so I still think that this is highly usable and it had a really nice outcome there. So that was pretty cool. I also think utilizing something with more of a tip like this uh, would work out better uh, to engrave rather than the ball joint. Ball joint. Uh, see, see what I'm thinking of. Uh, anyways, um, I thought this was kind of interesting. I wanted to share this with you guys because if you, again, if you guys have a CNC or whatever, this is, is something interesting and I like the idea of the water bath. Um, I did get a little bit of spray which I thought was a little bit unusual and it might be because of the ball, ball uh, rather than the end mill, but it wasn't too bad. So uh, I think this came out pretty interesting. So if you thought it came out interesting, hey, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget subscribe button's coming over there, swag shop up there, and hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe.